All right, guys, the time has come to do our Q&A with Nicholas Zarko from Dead Matter. He is a lead developer, and uh, I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's just get straight into the interview. I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm going to start out telling you thank you uh, for doing the Q&A. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's something that my guys are looking forward to, and I'm sure the community as a, as a whole when it comes to survival games would enjoy that. Uh, so thank you for that. And then, uh, you know, if I, if I ask any questions in this list that are going to uh, kind of hinder or, or too invasive to the development, uh, feel free to tell me. I can't answer that. And then okay. uh, obviously feel free to ask me questions. I know it's a Q and A for you guys, but uh, it, it helps. <laughs> you know, uh, if if it helps everybody understand more, then uh, definitely. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm sure a lot of people wonder, and I and I know that uh, it's a generic question. You probably get it every single time that someone does this. Uh, what made you guys decide to create Dead Matter? Uh, well. Uh... We were huge fans of uh, Left 4 Dead and kind of Resident Evil and a ton of uh, older zombie games. And then uh, Crisis came out and I kind of got into modding for that. And then Crisis oh, 2 came out, got into modding for that. And then I made a mod called Dead Matter uh, for Crisis 2. And then uh, eventually like we put the idea to rest and then uh, came back to it a few years later and started to make some really good progress. We got greenlit and then, you know, a few months later we were on Kickstarter. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That, see, I, I never played the dead matter, uh, mods, but then again, I never really played crisis with mods. I always played just crisis, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Crisis too. Like their modding tools came out after release, but like sort of pseudo after release. Like I think the game, I think crisis two itself got leaked and it got leaked with the editor and yeah when the official game came out, there was no editor and Crytek was taking down posts that people made with the unofficial editor. So they basically killed the modding community for the game. Like right as the game was basically coming out, they just kind of murdered it before. It. Yeah. Before, before it could even do anything. So, Oh, wow. Yeah. See, yeah. <laughs> I, I never, uh, never got into it like that. I, the only thing I ever got into modding was probably halo back when, uh, when it was like PC and, and the original Xbox. I got a thing yeah. called like Spark Edit and some other stuff, and I was modding the original Halo for Xbox, and that was that was probably as much modding as I got into. Yeah. So, uh, with uh, with survival games, you know, kind of uh, there being so many post-apocalyptic games out there, uh, what is going to set Dead Matter aside from those existing apocalypse games? Mm, I think that there's a lot of. Uh survival games out there but we want to be the first definitive zombie survival game where there's large amounts of zombies there's a lot of love put into the zombies you know there's big numbers of zombies and basically make the game about the zombies that's kind of what dead matter is about to us it's about the world you're in it's about the zombies it's about immersing you in an environment that you know you're kind of constantly prepping for survival constantly thinking you know what's going to happen when winter rolls around is my car still going to start properly is my furnace going to work you know all of those things are questions that you have to ask yourself and kind of solve in the fall which is when kind of dead matter starts on the uh you know single player and like when the servers also start up that's the season that they start in is fall so you kind of got a you have a goal right there which is you go and you get yourself ready to survive long term. And then in the spring and summer, there's additional kind of, you know, you start growing food and stuff like that. But, you know, you have to figure out immediately how you're going to get through the winter because we plan on making that the most difficult time in the game period is the winter. Wow. So so you guys um, are actually getting into the thought of like a car not actually starting or or like, you yeah, know, we want to make the season influence the gameplay quite heavily, like and make it so when you're in winter, you definitely know that you're in winter. When you're in summer, spring, summer, and fall are kind of different because there's not like the presence of the giant cold, but the fall, even like, you know, a lot of stuff, you just harvest it and that's it. Everything's, you know, you don't have to plant anything anymore. Spring, you kind of get ready for, you know, growing stuff in the summer, so. Wow, yeah, that's that's really and, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are kind of planning too to have servers not necessarily so restart friendly like uh, in DayZ. You kind of want it to be as persistent as possible. Yeah, we'd like servers to, you know, just 
actually age with the games. Some servers are older than others, and they can always set their own start date as well. And uh, there's a lot of modifiers, like uh, certain weapon drops and stuff like that. Like certain items won't even show up early in a server's life cycle uh, just because of how early along it is. Uh, Military-grade items are much more rare in the start of the year than they are during the winter and after. That's and that's awesome. I, I think that's something that a lot of survival games kind of do wrong. They they throw in these high powered military weapons and it's something that you get yeah. pretty much at spawn in some cases. And it, it really creates a crazy environment. And I'm actually gonna mention that. Yeah, later and if on. and if you want to avoid that environment, there's just a certain kind of date range or you know, server age that you can really target. And we're even going to allow servers to just make the loop weak. Uh, just to make the weak loop all over again hmm. uh, in the future. So you can essentially uh, not have any progress on uh, the season or anything like that, but it'll just be repeating the day. So there's no real progress on the server in terms of the meta game itself. The meta game would be frozen, uh, but it would essentially be preserving um, not the meta game itself, but I guess the time variables it used would be more or less frozen. So um, even food wouldn't decay because it would just be the same day over and over and over again. So, interesting. Of yeah. course, we would adjust for that and fix that, but that's you know kind of what it would do if we didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, mm -hmm. and and I've uh, I've seen that a couple times. The you say the meta game or or meta game. How? Yeah. I, that influences, uh, from what I understand, things like. Uh, zombie hordes and other things. What what all does that actually do? I know that's not on my list, but uh, it's kind of an interesting <laughs> question. Well, it it's essentially a uh, like I guess a tagging. It's like a tagging system and a series of actors that sits atop the normal game world. And what they do is they represent data, and uh, essentially that data can be anything like a zombie horde or. Um, even maybe data over top of a building saying like, hey, this building right here, um, it's a gas station and it's out of fuel. And then that tells the game to put, uh, you know, signs that, you know, other people would leave, other survivors that says like no gas or something at the gas station. So if you have a, you know, specific gas station on a server or whatever, you have to, you know, it actually has to have gas at it in order for you to refill and that's random for every single server. And that's we plan on doing that for quite a few different resources, just making certain areas have, you know, none, especially if they're close to the highway, the main highway that runs through part of the map. And that's mostly because we just want to put emphasis that, you know, resources are limited in that you also do have to kind of gather information and, you know, plan accordingly and all that. So so you guys will have kind of we could expect to see like if I was going to a military base. Or, or some kind of uh, you know high high valued military style area. If that place yeah. had already been looted up and it was completely empty of most of its resources, we could expect the game to kind of have signs that looks like maybe a player would have tagged it and says, you know, nothing left or or you know. It doesn't happen dynamically, although, I mean that is something that we could take into consideration, especially if, you know, it's kind of in the corner of the map and we can warn players on the road. But um, I do, yeah, it, it would pretty much operate like that. Like, it's kind of a random variation that every map has. And it's mostly because, like, we want to be a rogue light and have some element of randomness in the game. So. Cool. So it's really cool. So I... Uh... I, I like to kind of put myself into the lore of a lot of these games, especially like a, an RPG. And it's hard to do that in something like uh, like Daisy or or any of the other survival games because they don't really give you much. They just give you this this blank canvas of of go play. Uh, do you guys have a backstory? And and uh, if so, like what what is that backstory to Dead Matter? Yeah, we plan on revealing the backstory for Dead Matter just a later, just a little bit later on uh, down the line, but. Uh... If you want, I can like actually show you a picture of like how we plan on uh, basically kind of port displaying the world um, through the actual like notes left behind by survivors. So we put this in uh, our sneak peeks the other day, and then we tweeted it out later. And uh, yeah, that that actual same picture, and I'll put it up here in the in the video. I I shared this with my <laughs> Discord community. 
So I, yeah. I, uh, I really liked that. That was really cool to see the, yeah. the different, it's almost like people talking on a whiteboard at one after the next. Yeah. And that's kind of, we, we wanted to make certain parts of the map, um, that basically survivors got quarantined to while there was kind of, uh, actions going on by the military to preserve people and have them not die, like reduce the casualties from the incident as much as they could. So certain people got quarantined to completely like different parts of their towns or whatever. And they were all kind of in these evac centers. So that's what a lot of them did when they were in these kind of quarantine areas as the last few survivors. And uh, essentially dead matter takes place right when all of those get overtaken and the world in this area is just basically it's gone. Everything is collapsed. There's no more, you know, safe areas left. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, I, I put in here that you'd, you'd have to have some love for survival games or even zombie mm-hmm. games to make something like that dead matter. Uh, what, what do you find to be the most exciting thing about dead matter, whether it's in it or, or just in general? I think seeing the world come together has been very exciting for me to watch personally. Um, seeing how all these different systems are coming together, seeing how you know so many things are just coming together for the game, I'm really, really happy with that. So, so kind of like all the programs, ha- having all these people putting this together and kind of seeing the the if you were like a clay artist as you were finishing up that clay model, looking at it. Is that, is that yeah. kind of how you're, what you're talking about? It's like your the creation that's in your head kind of coming to. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just seeing like any sort of major jumps in progress is always really exciting. Like uh, when I download uh, the most recent levels that our artist has worked on and I see like, there's just so much more content added to it than there was before it really just makes working on the game a hell of a lot more exciting when you just constantly see stuff being done because like we're a really uh involved and active dev team and stuff is just getting done every single day like fast so seeing that kind of happen is just amazing and uh there's a lot of systems that get coded completely uh separately from one another so uh for example the lock picking totally like made separately Interesting. From like everything else in the game. But then we actually, you know, took that and oh, kind of, I don't know, my brain is just kind of <laughs> sparking out for a second. <laughs> no, but it's just seeing everything come together and like all of these different systems that were originally coded separately and actually left separately for kind of weeks on end and then put together eventually, you know, seeing like that happening more and more and more as time is going on, like that's the most kind of like exciting part of working on the game. Um, just seeing it really come together and actually becoming a game has been really just awesome. Yeah, it's, I, I can imagine that that would be, uh, that would be incredibly uh, exciting and, and really rewarding almost. So not a, uh, myself, I'm, I'm not a programmer. Uh, I don't know much, much when it comes to programming, I can look at code and, and edit, you know, little, not really code more like, uh, I guess XML yeah. files or something like that. I can do that kind of stuff. Uh, but you know, what what has been the most difficult task? Like, what's the the hardest thing you guys have had to overcome with Dead Matter? Uh, I think the thing that is very difficult to set up and really nail is uh, the gunplay and the movement. And you know, we've probably made gunplay and movement like six times now, and. You know, this time we've actually got very, you know, solid stuff, but it's something that takes a lot of polish and it takes a lot of time, you know, to hit that, you know, really nice point where just everything feels right and getting the movement just right is actually something that's very difficult. But I'm glad that we went through and carried it out because it's been amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Really happy with it right now. Yeah. And I think that's something that really gets kind of gets messed up with a lot of games. Some people just throw these these gunplay mechanics together and it feels like an arcade shooter or, you know, sometimes they go too far and it feels way too mm-hmm. too realistic. Um, I could definitely see that. Did you guys kind of get any inspiration from anywhere else or did, was it just something you guys came up with? Um, I believe our weapon system right now, it's it's very much the result of just a lot 
of mashing different elements together and seeing what worked and just making them kind of work. Um, I guess there's an inspiration on my end from like the actual setup and the gunplay and how it kind of functions. There's a lot of inspiration from Rainbow Six Siege in there for me, even though they use ballistics. So that's kind of well, you can shoot through walls in that game. So I guess it makes it even kind of more like that. But um, I would say it's kind of on my end, especially with how the leaning works and everything. It does kind of feel like there was a lot of inspiration from Siege. Um, and then our animator came in and I know that there's now a lot of a Tarkov flavor to the animation style and everything now. So that's, really um, cool. Tarkov, so yeah, it's Tarkov almost like, really good. yeah, it's almost like Tarkov mixed with rainbow six siege, which, uh, like I, I don't really like Tarkov too much, but I imagine if you do, it would be really exciting to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I got into Tarkov for all of a month, I think. And I just, I felt like it was really the the gunplay was just so realistic in the sense of how quickly you die uh, that yeah. that it really just it drove me away I guess um, yeah and, and some yeah. people love that some people get like engrossed in that kind of stuff they just love it uh, but you know I think it's really cool I like I like the the way that the gun kind of feels on that game and and then to hear you know something like Siege I, I think it's going to be a really good that that'd be a really great mixture honestly just from the sound of those two. This is going to wrap up the first episode, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed the first part. There will be a couple more parts coming. I'm trying to break this up into, uh, you know, bite-sized portions. If you guys haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button for me. And if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next live stream or video.